this posture that we take when we begin class also tends to bring our attention and our gaze downward and inward towards the heart. So I'm gonna ask you to picture in your heart like a candle flame, as if you had lit the candle on the altar or near to the Murti if you have such on your altar. And you could imagine the candle flame of your heart is connected to the candle flames of others who are here to practice. And if you've ever seen it, or perhaps you've been to India with me, where you see the like hundreds of little oil lamps that are lit. And above those oil lamps are the prayer flags outside of some of the caves that we went into. These are in the Buddhist parts that we have visited. So you would just have this candle flame, but it has countless companion candle flames. While the flame of your heart, of our hearts, is lit today in this moment, and we just have a few decades on the planet, we know that these rituals, the ritual of lighting the flame, is actually thousands of years. Through a lot of different kinds of turbulence. So prayers for peace and the Resolution of suffering. Now let's deepen the breath. And when you deepen your breathing, try to sense that the inhale does lift your heart, but it's not a, an erratic or chaotic in-breath. So the candle flame is actually steady. The inhale does lift up into the heart for the final third of the inhale. And you can keep a gentle lift in, the, in your heart when you're exhaling. So the chest isn't actually going up and down, up and down with the breath, though there is a gentle sense of the rise on inhalation and a little bit of softening on the exhalation. Please join your hands together at your heart. And this morning we'll chant Om Namah Shivaya, Gurave, Sat Chidananda, Mortaye, Nish Prapanchaya, Shantaya, Niralambaya, Tejase. And this line, Nish Prapanchaya, Shantaya, means may our practice eradicate darkness which translation darkness means ignorance, forgetfulness, kind of going below the line of conscious attention. Nishra Panchaya Shantaya, may we eradicate darkness and bring peace, Shantaya. Let's begin. Om Namah Shivaya Gurave Satchitananda Murtaye Nishprapanchaya Shantaye Niralambaya Tejase Om Namah Shivaya Gurave Satchitananda Nishprapanchaya Shantaye Niralambaya Tejase Om Namah Shivaya Gurave Satchitananda Murtaye 
Prapanchayo Shantayo Niralambayo Tejase Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Guru Pyonama May you bow your head to your heart. Honor the flame in your own heart and that which has lit that flame and that which sustains it. You can release your hands and staying in your upright seat. We'll come to Bastrika to just get the yayas worked out and then we'll go to Kapalabhati and we will be using inhale suspension. So let's begin. Bastrika is a strong exhale out through the mouth. Inhale. Inhale through the nose, lower, middle, upper torso. Suspend the inhale at the top. Exhale through both nostrils. Deeply relax. We're gonna repeat that and go a little bit faster. Don't make yourself breathless, please. Inhale through the nose. Exhale through both nostrils. We're gonna use the nostril breathing, rapid. We're gonna go inhale, the hands are open, inhale up, exhale down like this. And you do wanna kind of squeeze the upper back when you're coming down. So let's begin. You can follow my pace or go a little slower if you need to. Inhale, exhale. Now inhale up to suspension. Exhale. 
Exhale through both nostrils. The exhale is long and smooth and steady. And deeply relax the muscles that completed the exhale. And return your attention to the candle flame in the center of the heart. Countless other candle flames, millions of candle flames. Yours is one of millions or beyond. And now we'll use Kapalabhati and we'll be doing the suspensions using Nadi Shodhana. So this will be our last seated pranayama. So sitting upright, you can refresh your posture. And you can use my pace to be consistent or you can go a little slower if you need to. I wouldn't recommend going that much faster because for each contraction of the exhale, you need to be able to also Release the belly muscles between the contractions. Let's begin. Inhale through both nostrils. Come up to your suspension. Close the right side, exhale left side. Inhale left. Suspend. Exhale, right side. Inhale, right. Exhale, left. And deeply relax. Imagine the candle flame in your own heart.
Om Namah Shivaya Gurave Satchitananda Murtaye Nishprapanchaye Ashantaye Niralambhaye Tejase Nira Lambaya Tejase. Okay, let's come over to quadruped or um, table pose. I'll change my camera. When you come to table pose, if you'd like, you can have a blanket for your knees. Uh, I have a double yoga mat, so I'm, I'm not using a blanket for my knees. And we're gonna start slowly but consistently moving through. <clears throat> so keep your ujjayi breath smooth and steady. So inhale can relatively equal exhale to the best of your ability. You might remind yourself that at the top of the inhale, the inhale pause, like no more air is coming, but you have a sense that you're still using the muscular nature of inhale. Same with exhale, you've completed the exhale and the pause, you sense the musculature still in the exhale mode and each transition is smooth in that regard. So let's inhale to cat pose, bring your spine into flexion. Exhale to child's pose. Inhale, cat pose. Exhale, cow pose. Bring your heart forward. Now, inhale, inchworm pose, knees, chest, and chin. Exhale, cobra. Inhale, cow pose. And exhale, cat pose. Inhale, child's pose. Exhale, cat pose. Inhale, cow pose. Exhale, inchworm. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, cow pose. Inhale, cat pose. Exhale, child's pose. Inhale, cat pose. Exhale, cow pose. We're gonna be changing this up in a moment. So you're gonna inhale, inchworm pose. Touch the heart down between the thumbs. Exhale, cobra pose. Now inhale, plank pose. And exhale, downward facing dog pose. Okay, enjoy a deep breath in, in dog pose. And exhale, roll forward using a cat pose spine to come into plank. Inhale, reach back, downward facing dog pose. Exhale, cat pose spine as you come into plank. One more, inhale, downward dog. Adho Mukha Svanasana. Exhale, plank, Palakasana. Touch your knees lightly down. Sit back to Vajrasana. 
If possible, you can just kneel directly onto your heels. If necessary, take a block to put under your hips. Om Namah Shivaya Gurave Satchitananda Murtaye Nish Prapanchaya Shantaya forward up to standing for Surya Namaskar. And we'll bring the blocks in so that your Uttanasana has a little bit more power in the lower belly. And please rise up to stand and join your hands at your heart. So you can bring a quality of tone to the outer body to support the internal pathway we call central channel, the Shushumna Nahi. And imagine the candle flame at the heart here is at the fourth chakra. Using your ujjayi breath, you don't want to make the practice too windy, too many um, rittis, but you do want the breath to be consistent and strong enough. So inhale, hands down, palms open, arms up. Exhale, chair pose. Inhale, rise. Come up into a little standing back bend, please. Exhale, Uttanasana. Tone your inner arches, inner thighs. As you press into the two blocks, tone the deep, low abdomen to complete the exhale. Inhale, glide forward through your heart. Okay, exhale, left toes back and left knee down. Inhale, rise up, Anjane Asana. Exhale, arms wide, touch the two blocks first lightly and then firmly, plank pose. Exhale, downward facing dog pose. Inhale, in your dog pose. And then exhale, left foot forward and right knee down. Inhale to rise. And exhale, descend. You can touch the blocks lightly. This time we're gonna step forward. So inhale, right foot forward, Ardha Uttanasana. And exhale, Uttanasana. Inhale, rise up. If possible, come up into a little standing back bend. And then exhale, hands to your heart. We're gonna to add to that. So inhale, upward hands pose. Little back bend if you can. Exhale, chair pose. Inhale, rise up, little back bend if you can. Exhale, Uttanasana. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. Okay, exhale, left toes back and left knee down. Inhale, rise, Anjane Asana. Exhale, touch the blocks lightly and then firmly. Straighten and strengthen your left leg, inhale. Now exhale, right leg, knee to chest, plank pose. So just pick up your right foot. And then inhale, step back, plank pose. And exhale, downward facing dog pose. Okay, 
And then exhale, left foot forward, right knee down. The inhale to rise, Anjane Asana. And exhale to descend. Make the hands firm. Also tone the right inner thigh. Straighten your right leg as you inhale. And then exhale, left knee to your chest, plank pose. Also called one-footed plank pose. Inhale, plank. And this time, exhale, slowly lower your knees to table pose. Inhale, cow pose. Exhale, seal pose. Bring your hips forward and down. Good. Inhale to go up. Exhale, plank. Tone the inner thighs and inner arches in plank pose. And then reach back, downward facing dog pose. Now step the awkward foot forward first. Second foot forward. Inhale, rise up, standing back bend. And exhale, hands to your heart. Imagine the candle flame in the center of the heart. We're going to add to the sequence again. Let's begin. Inhale. Exhale, chair pose. Inhale, rise up, back bend. Exhale, Uttanasana. Inhale, glide forward. Exhale, left toes back, left knee down. This is Anjane Asana. Inhale to rise. Exhale, touch the blocks. Inhale, knee to chest, plank pose. Exhale, plank. Inhale, table. Exhale, cow pose. Inhale, seal pose. Shoulders back, exhale, cobra pose with the hands elevated. Bhujangasana. Inhale, seal pose, rising up. Exhale, plank pose. Gaze down between your thumbs. Tone the inner thighs. Inhale, downward facing dog pose. Exhale, right foot forward, left knee down. Oops, that's the side I did before. I'll have to repeat it. <laughs> Inhale to go up. Exhale, descend. Okay, inhale, downward dog pose. Exhale, left foot forward, right knee down. Inhale to rise. Exhale, descend, make the hands firm, and inhale, knee to chest, plank pose. Okay, exhale, plank pose, tone the inner thighs. Inhale, lightly touch your knees down, table. Cow pose, heart forward. Seal pose, inhale. Cobra pose, Bhujangasana. Inhale, rise up to seal. Plank pose, toe knee, inner arches, inner thighs, and the deep low belly. Inhale, downward dog. Okay, left foot forward, right knee down. This is the repeat. I was committing to it. 
Exhale. Now we'll inhale, step forward. Ardha Uttanasana. And exhale to deeply bow. Rising up, back bend. And then hands to the heart. And you can imagine again the candle flame installed in your heart. Om Namah Shivaya Gurave Satchitananda Murtaye Nishra Panchaya Shantaya release your hands and if you haven't yet taken a blanket for your mat please reach for a blanket we're going to come down and play a little bit with the pelvis inner thighs i used the word play and i said the word little <laughs> i don't know how it will be if you'll feel like this is play or this is little but i have to keep you enticed so i say we're going to play a little bit I don't know if I have to keep you enticed. You're committed enough. Okay, so come down to your knees and forearms, this kind of table pose, and then step your right foot out to the side. And for now, you can have the right toes pointing straight forward. Mm -hmm. And try to level your hips. So when you step your right foot out to the side, the left thigh can still be vertical. To level your hips, you have to encourage the right hip to drop down so that the back of the sacrum and the pelvis, if you had some need to store a teacup there, you wouldn't be spilling the tea to the right or the left. Okay, so in this position, your right foot, the toes are pointing forward. When we roll backwards now, you're gonna end up pointing the arms like an arrow, the elbows will come off the floor and the right toes will roll up towards the ceiling. And then we're gonna bring that forward again to the starting position. So check your own distance for where your elbows are right now compared to your left knee. And let's reach back with the exhale, roll your right toes up, press your pinkies down, but lift your elbows. And inhale, glide forward, touch the elbows down, bring your heart for a little bit like you're doing cow pose. And exhale, glide back, kind of like doing child's pose, a variation on child's pose. And glide forward. And one more time, glide back. This time as you glide forward, think of your spine coming into table pose. Cross your right forearm to the front of the mat, reach for your block on the tall setting and press your left hand down there to twist. So your right upper arm and right elbow, you wanna press firmly down. That's a part of what motivates your twist. It's not just your left hand on your block. Lengthen your right inner thigh and heel. And then see if you're able to raise your left arm. A little bit like the standing pose we call Parvita Trikonasana or Parvita Prasarata Padottanasana. And then with an exhale, release back down to your starting position and step your right foot in and your left foot out. 
and point the toes of the left foot forward. You bring the spine a little bit like cow pose, so you can get started here. And then reach back, kind of like child's pose. And then roll that forward. And glide back. Rotate your left outer hip, outer thigh, outer shin, outer heel. And glide forward. You can rotate the toes back down to the floor. And glide back one more time. And glide forward. Okay, let's take the block to the other side. So make your pelvis and your spine a little bit more like table pose. Cross your left forearm on the front of your mat, right hand to your tall block, and please twist to your right. So doing your best to keep your pelvis level here, you want the right thigh to still be vertical. Lengthen your left inner thigh towards your left heel. Strengthen your left upper arm and elbow. And see if you can raise your right arm. Your twist is probably not symmetrical left to right. And as you exhale, touch your right hand back to the block. Return your left forearm, right forearm, pull the left knee in. And let's sit back to Vajrasana and you can sit directly to your heels or you can sit on a block if you like, like flat or medium, it's up to you. Notice how things are feeling. Now I'm gonna ask you to fold this blanket that you're kneeling on Fold it in half, twice. Okay, so I am kneeling on the blanket with the knees up, means that the feet are lower down, means that the, the hips are lower than they would be because the knees are elevated. So in relationship to the knees, the hips are a little bit lower. This is gonna be like a little platform for your gait pose, Padigasana. So come up to standing on your knees. And for those who might need a little extra height, you put the two blocks to the side, you can stack them, something like that. And rise up to your high knees like this. Step your right foot out. Okay, so not everyone's foot is able to become flat to the floor like that. I have very flexible feet in this direction. And that was helpful when I was a gymnast. I have very stiff ankles for the other direction. That was also actually helpful as a gymnast. I didn't fall off the balance beam very much. <laughs> um, but it's not helpful for squatting. Like I've never squatted with my heels down to the floor without some kind of support. Um, so if your foot doesn't point like mine does, you have a different architecture to your foot. It can be helpful to put something under the toes so you don't feel like you're just balancing on the heel bone here. Okay, hands to your hips, please. Root down from the back of your sacrum to your tailbone to your left knee and tone the left butt muscle. So this is a stable joint for you right now. And then glide down to your right. Take your right hand to the tall blocks that we made. And then raise your left arm overhead. And see if you can keep the, the sustained action of toning the back of your left butt, your left outer hip, root down through your left thigh into the blanket. And then in the inner belly, lift up through there. So you're addressing a musculoskeletal pathway called the iliopsoas muscle. And do let the spine arc. So this is a side bend. We are not trying to keep 
the right side waist equal to the left side waist. You may turn to look up if your neck can support that. You may choose to look down if you feel like you need more sense of grounding. Something like this. In the sustained effort, notice the quality of the breath. So if your heart were a candle flame, does it feel windy or chaotic? Now coming into your left low belly, start exhaling to root your left thigh more and bring yourself upright, release your left arm. Now, I hope that the blanket, you have enough padding for your knee that it's comfortable as you bend your right knee, perhaps you're gonna have the ability for your right shin to come towards vertical. That means that your left leg is not now vertical. It's a little bit like doing the standing pose that we would call Parjva Kanasana. Press the right knee open a little bit. Yeah. We'll go ahead and place the right hand on this firm, tall block. Press down into your right arm. Lengthen the tailbone, that's good, yeah. And then raise your left arm. And then ease into your right upper inner thigh. But do keep your right knee pressed open. So it's not that your right knee is pushing on your right wrist. It might be the opposite, that your right wrist is sort of sustaining or supporting your right knee, not to collapse in. Press into your left knee and again, tone your left butt, left outer hip. And then we are going to use the exhale again to rise up and relax your left arm down. And without knocking your blocks over, step your right knee in. Let's go to the other side. Just for a moment, you can tuck the toes under and sit back to kneel where your hips are on your heels if possible. The toes tucked under, I know it's like, sometimes people call it toe breaking pose. Some of you have very flexible toes, so it's not so hard. My toes are not flexible. This is a big stretch for my toes. And then come upright on your knees, press your right knee firmly down and step the left foot out gate pose. You can point the toes to your left. Now some of you have asked me before about what if your toes don't point that well to the left. In that case, turn your hips a little bit more to give your thigh the ability to turn your toes so your foot is pointing straight off to the left. If you're trying to turn the toes a little forward, what you're doing is putting your left thigh into internal rotation. And then if you want to side bend on that, you will generally end up with a, a bony hindrance. They would be knocking into each other. So turn your left toes out. Yeah. Let's make the right thigh vertical. Raise your right arm up. Left hand to your blocks. Those of you who have not re recently visited with your right ilio psoas muscles, means the iliacus and the psoas. Well then, good morning. So tone your right butt again and your right outer hip, please. You may choose to look up. You may choose to look down. Toning the right low belly, press into your right thigh and bring yourself up. 
Okay, now you're gonna bend the left knee and we're gliding. For some of you, if you've got a, a design in the hip joint that requires it, what you do is you take the right shin slightly out to the right. That's not everybody's need, but for some of you, and I was talking about rotation on the, it's called the front leg. This is external rotation right now. And for some of you having the back leg get a little bit of internal rotation here, it's gonna be helpful. That's why we take the shin just very slightly out to the right. Place your left hand. And press your left wrist against your left knee for support. So that your left knee can't collapse in. And just breathing in, breathing out, letting your body do the thing it knows how to do. Tone from your right low belly, press down into your right thigh and knee. And exhale to glide back up. And then again, without knocking your blocks over, you can bring your left foot in. Tuck your toes under, please. Sit back to kneeling. You can have the knees be hip distance apart. And the toes are curled under to the best of your ability. Om Namah side view where we are going. So I'm going to turn my setup for you. You don't have to turn yours. You can relax the toes if you need to because you're going to tuck them under again. So release them and then tuck them under. Some of you will need blocks here if you feel like it's important to touch something. <laughs> you don't have to touch. Remember that when you were a kid? No touching, no touching for your siblings in the back seat. No touching, but you would get close enough to irritate them. You don't need to touch the blocks. <laughs> so this is camel pose. We're going to put the hands so that the fingers point up and the hands, the heels of the hands pull down. Because you have your knees padded, I've got the toes tucked under here. Otherwise, the heels would be quite a bit lower. And then you lift up through your heart, roll your shoulders back. Raise up through your collarbones, set the shoulders back. And the head only releases back if you have the flexibility in your upper back first. For anybody who has the capacity, you can release the hands to clasp your fingers together. Roll the shoulders open. For anybody who can easily reach the heels, you may touch your fingers to your heels. Do not collapse backwards to get to your heels. And for everyone, as you're ready to, you pull yourself up from the heart first then point the toes and when you lower your hips down your hips will be level with or lower than your knees and then you've got 
these blocks. So this is a variation on child's pose where the knees are higher than the feet. So your hips are more naturally lower towards your heels. We're elevating the head so that you can have your hips descending to touch your heels. Om Namah Shivaya Purave Satchirananda Murtaya Nishpapanchaya Shantaya Miralambaya Please walk your hands back towards your knees. You have your nicely folded blanket and your two blocks. For those for those of you used to practice Ashtanga yoga, you can try this now. I never accomplished this particular thing with Ashtanga. With blocks or without, I never actually accomplished it. You can pick up your legs and slide them through to Dandasana. So those people who can hover here can slide through. Otherwise, you're going to step through to Dandasana. <laughs> Did you see I was hovering? <laughs> Levitating. Take the blanket back until you have it. So when you lie down, the upper back, chest, and heart are open. You know, Richard Freeman told me all those years, I would get it, I would get it someday, even though I have shorter arms and a long torso. But um, I did see him at a Yoga Alliance meeting in 2017, and I, I confessed, I never got it worked out. He forgave me. <laughs> So when you come down to this position, this is just a simple backbend pose for the moment. Try to picture once more the candle flame of the heart. The blanket, by the way, just to be clear, it's under the, the shoulder blade. So when you lie down, it's the blanket is not under your floating ribs, it's under your shoulder blades. The shoulders should fall back towards the floor. Please bend both knees now and make your feet as wide as the yoga mat. And then lower both knees down to your left, like windshield wipers on the trailways bus. And twist your upper back to your right. And roll your knees up to center. Just a brief twist to the other side. We are heading towards Shavasana. So take your knees down to your right. The left knee may come down near to your right foot. It may not reach the floor, it might, it might not. Twist your upper back to your left. And then roll that back up to center. And to set up for Shavasana this morning, I'd like you to take the same long fold blanket and place it down the center line of your mat. You can reach for both blocks. So you'll have them sitting in front of, but not on your blanket. You lie back 
And we'll place the feet into Baddha Konasana. Curl the blanket under your neck. It's called the inchworm curl for those who don't know. Uh, <laughs> so you don't curl the top of the blanket down towards the head. You actually pick up the head and curl right under your neck. And that gives a little support to the cervical spine. You haven't sort of totally, quote unquote, totally closed the throat here. Gentle opening and you've got pressure at the occipital ridge which is a nice way to sort of calm down and rebalance the craniosacral rhythm in your body. As you rest, imagine a candle flame in your heart, which is very still, but remains luminous and is connected to the other millions of candle flames.
Allow the ease of your Shavasana to go deeper for a couple more minutes, please. Let yourself be very much at rest. Allow your mind and your body to remain deeply still for just a short while longer, please. Om Namah Shivaya Gurave Satchitananda Murtaye Nishpakanchaya Shantaya Niralambaya Tejase In your own timing now, you may make a little bit of movement to your fingers and your toes and transition from Shavasana back up to sitting, please. When you rise up to sit, for those of you who can see in the room that I'm sitting, this image to my left, which is on the right side of your screen, the bottom image is actually the large prayer wheels with the prayers embedded on them. And the colors that you see are the prayer flags in the breeze. The prayer wheels surround the stupa or the temple and you spin the prayer wheels as you walk by and many, many people are walking you have to walk at a certain pace because there's, there's a kind of procession. And it goes, you circumnavigate, circumnambulate might be the word. The picture above here is the top of the stupa. This is in Kathmandu. And so those prayer flags are hung from the top of the stupa on the long strings. And you see some prayer flags along the bottom of the picture. I'll take a photograph so I can put it on um, our website, you can see them better. Um, we're sitting here with Kathmandu. Over here is Varanasi, Tirvanamalai, and the Himalayas, which I know you can't see that well. But When you come to take your seat after this practice, so just take a few moments of, of silence. 
but imagine yourself, this candle flame in your heart connected to the thousands of years of tradition, not only yoga tradition to light a candle, many traditions. And join your hands together at your heart. Now chant Om Shanti three times. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Shanti 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 You may bow your head to your heart. Thank you everyone. Namaste. Coming up to see you. Thank you, Nicole, for your note. Hmm. I can see your notes. It's nice. You're welcome to type, you're welcome to reflect, you're welcome to say something if you'd like. No, no, there's no particular requirement. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Marlene and Sarah, <laughs> Emily. <laughs> I knew what you meant, Marlene. I actually thought, well, let me say this. I thought that Marlene was meaning to type, I feel blessed by your teachers, by my teachers uh, coming through me. <laughs> so that that's the reference for where I teach from. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if possible, um, for those of you who are very sensitive to the news, like your, your nervous system responds more dynamically, it's helpful to ask somebody else to 
convey the news to you what you need to know. What somebody that you trust that that could help you, so you don't have to go seeking it out or hearing it all with the the part that gets the sensationalization of it, how that can go. When you're porous, when your heart is porous, it can go very deeply. Um, so sometimes we ask somebody else who has an easier time digesting or metabolizing the news, could they translate that? Could they bring it for us? Yeah. 